Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. It's Thursday, the 15th of December. I'm Claire Nazir. Joining me today is the one and only in a beautiful Nordic jumper, Alex Deacon. Thanks very much, Claire. Yes, I thought I'd dress for the weather and, you know, the almost Christmas feel. There's a lot happened in weather this week. I mean, first of all, there's some high tech stuff going on up in the atmosphere. Absolutely, yes. We've seen some uh, big developments through this week, some very exciting developments as well. We love a satellite picture, don't we? At the moment, showing actually some snow across parts of England and Wales lying. You can see that snow beautifully on the satellite image when the skies have been clear. We rely so heavily on satellite images. We've you know, grown up with them, haven't we, Claire? They've really developed as we've gone through our meteorological education. But the next step is upon us. Yes, it's exciting stuff. And we're going to be talking to Tom Blackmore. You've got to listen to this interview. It's fantastic. He lives and breathes this stuff. He really does. And he's talking about the latest weather satellite launch, which happened this week. The satellite is now in space and there's some proper high tech stuff associated with it. So that's coming up. That's really, really good. Also, we get the latest from around the world. The Northern Hemisphere It's cold, not only here in the UK, but elsewhere across Northern Europe and beyond. Alex, give me a number. How low do you think it's going to go across the Northern Hemisphere? What sort of temperatures are we talking about here? Oh, this time of year, you've got to be getting minus 40, maybe minus 45. Well, we're going to find out what that low is. How low will it go? But first of all, Alex, let's just really cast our eye across the UK and this week. We've had two weeks of meteorological winter and my goodness, what a shock to the system. What happened earlier this week? Minus 17 we got down to, or minus 15, and then the next morning it was minus 17. The coldest morning for uh, a couple of winters, I think February 2021 was the last time we got down that low. And then the daytime temperatures, Braemar in Scotland, wow, didn't get above minus 9.3 Celsius. That was the high. Minus 9.3 was the high. That is cold. The coldest day uh, recorded anywhere in the UK for 12 years since 2010. So, yes, it has been a cold week. We've seen temperatures down to minus 10, even across parts of southern England, parts of Wales. And not necessarily where there's even snow lying. So that is pretty unusual uh, to see those kind of temperatures. Uh, And yes, the cold spell has been pretty lengthy as well. That's one of the key things about this cold spell, just how long it's lasted. And tragic in some cases and miserable for many. Shetland made headline news this week because of not only wind, but snow and ice, which has really impacted their power lines. Yeah, really serious consequences uh, this week across the UK from this wintry weather. Just goes to show, you know, the power of Mother Nature should never be underestimated. Problems across Shetland with those uh, power lines coming down, gale force winds combining with the snow, obviously creating blizzards. This cold spell, as I say, has been pretty lengthy. That's the perhaps most unusual thing about it. In terms of temperatures, well, we've, yeah, as I said, seen some of the lowest for a few years, but actually nothing exceptional. We've not been close to the minus 27.2 Celsius, which is, our, of course, our, our all-time low temperature. Uh, so it's unusual, I guess, in the sense that we haven't seen this kind of lengthy cold spell for a while as our climate continues to warm. These cold waves are becoming uh, less frequent and and not as extreme, but it is notable, and particularly after such a mild November. Let's pause there for a moment, because, you know, back in the day when we went to Met School, we we never used the word (laughs) cold wave, did we? This is a real modern term, which I I occasionally just sort of I shudder a little bit because (laughs) it was never my speak, but certainly is now. And explain in general terms what it means. Well, that's a good question, isn't it? What does what does it actually mean? It's a bit like a heat wave, I guess. And the fact that there hasn't been an official definition across the UK of what a cold wave is. I suspect it's probably an American term that's become a little bit more popular over here. Perhaps a cold snap or a cold spell is is how we'd more usually term it. But again, there's no official definition for these cold features. My interpretation is that cold wave is a little more widespread and lasts a little bit longer than a cold spell and a cold spell lasts a little bit longer than a cold snap. And I think we can probably definitely call this a cold wave because, the you know, the cold has continued for uh, quite a long time, almost the entirety of December so far. OK, so we are keeping a keen eye on the weather 
uh, across the UK, not only through Friday where we're expecting snow, but beyond that, because it's the clash, isn't it? It's when we see the milder air try to invade and we've got this really cold, dense air over the UK. That's when the weather can get extreme again. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting on Sunday, potentially quite dangerous, actually. It's what we we'll call a multi-hazard event because this is a quite a deep area of low pressure, bringing really quite mild air up across the UK after what has been a very cold December so far. Even before we get there on Friday, some snow are likely in parts of Scotland. That could cause a few issues. But this thing coming on Sunday is going to affect all parts of the UK. It is bringing mild air. So by the end of Sunday and into Monday, temperatures will be back into double figures. And they'll be rising steadily through the day. But it's bringing moisture, hitting the cold air. So for a time, there will be some significant snowfall. It may not last all that long. It may not be what people want if you want to get out and play in the snow. Because as I said, it's not going to last all that long. But for people travelling on Sunday, this is really quite serious. A couple of hours, three or four hours in places of heavy snowfall, particularly over higher ground. So I'm thinking some of the main routes on Sunday, uh, the M42, uh, parts of the M5, the M6, even the M1, and particularly the M62 over the Pennines there. You know, please keep up to date with the forecast because timing is going to be crucial. This could bring a few hours of heavy snow that's going to be pretty grim. Further south, it may not last that long, but there could be some. Ice is a bigger risk. And then we've got freezing rain thrown into the mix as well that's where it turns a bit milder so it's actually the snow turns to rain as it hits the ground though the ground is still below freezing and it freezes instantly and it turns things into an ice rink don't see it that often in the uk but it can be exceptionally dangerous and then we've got the winds combining with this as well so that could make blizzards so as i said this is something we need to keep a really close eye on there are warnings in place for sunday but please keep up to date if you have plans on sunday well just really bear that in mind so the weather looks like it is really turning. It's changing, but it's the transition. It's cold at the moment. We're going right up to miles, Sunday into Monday, and then next week we drop back down. So back to colder, but not as cold as it is currently, but still back in the territory where we could see some further wintry hazards and the potential for snow during Christmas week. Did uh, 10 day trend Did you say on? Did you say? What did you just say? What did I say? Snow during Christmas week. <laughs> That's just yeah, too broad. Yes, let's pin it down, man. Let's pin it down. Still, there's still over a week to go. You know, it's too early to say. And they say the models are not necessarily agreeing on the details for next week, but it is going to be, you know, this these past few weeks, we've had northerlies and easterly winds uh, and those kind of air masses don't hold as much moisture. Next week, we are turning more westerly. It won't be as cold, but the westerly influence reintroduces that moisture. So snow could be more of an issue, but it's going to be on the cusp. It's going to be finely balanced so for the details we just can't say at the moment so stay tuned stay up to date with yeah. everything from the met office make sure you're following us across social media oh, i love it when you talk weather i really I'm do always... you just, <laughs> yes you just wax lyrical day on the cusp everybody on the cusp so a lot to play for you know we are heading towards christmas day we all want a bit of snow we don't want it when we're trying to battle with traffic getting from yes. a to b and i haven't done my christmas shopping yet so obviously that's a factor i'll be keeping a keen eye on the weather as well really good, really good point on that claire this weekend as our colleague Craig Snell said at this morning's brief, I thought this was fantastic. Saturday is your Christmas shopping day. Sunday is your Christmas film day. Get it right. I mean, it's not going to be dry everywhere on Saturday, but it's going to be a lot nicer on Saturday for being out than it will be on Sunday. So Saturday is Christmas shopping. Sunday is Christmas film. Thank you very much to Craig Snell for those wise words. Alex, I'm pleased you were listening in our meeting earlier. Now, let's just go beyond the, the shores of the UK. Let's now have a look and see what's happening across the Northern Hemisphere. Earlier, I spoke to Deputy Chief Meteorologist Dan Harris, who, first of all, talks about what's happening across North America. Uh, it's going to be very cold. We're looking at um, potential lows down as low as minus 30, possibly minus 35. And in places, the daytime high might not get above minus 20. So that is absolutely bitter. And also snow as well? There will be some snow. Um, I think uh, not a huge amount, though. The main driver of the cold air is going to be a lot of clear, very cold air, obviously, but a lot of clear still air, um, very cold nights, low in temperatures to fall very low. Explain to me why this is happening. Is it something it's going to also be prolonged for a few days? 
it is Canada, it's Arctic Canada, so it does get cold out at this time of year. This is exceptionally cold though, um, and it's tied in with what we call a, a very amplified pattern in the high latitudes, essentially high pressure setting up across northwest North America, and that's dragging in cold Arctic air from even higher latitudes than normal, spreading it southwards um, and therefore allowing temperatures to fall below average. And as I say, although it's very cold normally here at this time of year, this is notably cold. It really is. And it's not just this part of the world which is seeing a real dig of Arctic air. Where else are we seeing these, I'm going to call it Baltic conditions? The whole northern hemispheric pattern is linked. It's all very amplified at the moment, and that's allowing various areas to tap into frigidly cold air. We've got uh, very cold air across Scandinavia and uh, northern Europe at this time, and a notable cold spell here in the UK, and also across uh, parts of north and northeast Russia, the place in Russia called Oymyakon uh, recently recorded a minimum temperature of minus 61, and that is one of the coldest, and it's said to be the coldest inhabited place on Earth. But uh, yeah, even there, minus 61 is quite an exceptional temperature. That is absolutely, I mean, you can't imagine how freezing that is. I mean, we've seen very low temperatures here across the UK, but that is on another level completely. Is this quite unusual for the beginning of the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere? It's hard to say, really. I don't think it's particularly unusual. From our UK perspective, this cold December has been unusual in comparison to, say, the last 10 Decembers. You've got to go back to December 2010 before you have anything comparable to this. Uh, it was worth saying that this cold spell isn't quite of the magnitude of the December 2010 spell. But certainly, yeah, if you look back at uh, December since then, between now and then, um, it's generally been milder than average. So in that sense, it's a bit unusual looking at it with our UK lens. But across the northern hemisphere, these kind of cold spells at this time of year aren't unusual at all. Dan Harris, Deputy Chief Meteorologist here at the Met Office, talking about cold waves. And in fact, there have been a lot of comments on social media in particular over the last few weeks saying, what is all this about global warming? The weather is so cold. And, you know, the headlines which will be coming out in the next few days are about the world seeing probably its warmest year on record, Alex. Yes, we are still on track. Despite this cold spell, we are still on track for the warmest year on record across the globe and particularly across the UK. The rest of December would have to be significantly colder than average and actually colder even than it has been for the first two weeks for us to, to get close to it not being the warmest year on record. So it is very likely going to be the warmest year on record across the UK and a couple of cold weeks in December does not counteract that. And the trend is that this year has been exceptionally mild. November was exceptionally mild, which is part of the reason why this has been such a shock to the system. But we are still on track, as I said, for this to be the warmest year on record. The difference between weather and climate you know, it's just how long you measure the period. Weather happens over a period of weeks. Uh, climate is measured over a much longer period. And all the records that you can see pointing to this rising of temperatures across the globe and across the UK. So, you know, you need to look up the difference between weather and climate. That's the simple answer. Yeah, certainly temperatures rocketing um, across the board. Not only did we see that through the summer, we saw temperatures in excess of 40 degrees, but you just look at the temperature profile over the last 150 years. It just speaks volumes of what actually is going on on the ground and in the atmosphere. And talking about rocketing and the atmosphere, um, a nice segue, don't you think so? Wow, that is nice. I mean, that is a link. That is a really good link, yes. Um, this week, we heard such good news about a new generation of weather satellites which have been launched into space. For all the details, let me now introduce you to Tom Blackmore. He's my go-to if I need a really decent satellite picture, even just to look at as a piece of art. But I obviously call him the satellite guy. That's he is the sat guy. Tom Blackmore, the satellite guy. He really is. Um, and he just knows his imagery and he just he, he's got such a passion. So let's just go over to Tom now and he'll tell us all about what's been happening this week with the latest weather satellite. My name is Thomas Blackmore. My job title is science manager of the space data products and systems team. The satellite that was launched was the very first satellite of the Meteosat third generation program. So these are geostationary satellites which provide images of Europe and Africa and the surrounding oceans. The satellite was a joint effort between UMETSAT and the European Space Agency. So UMETSAT are the European Organization for Meteorological Satellites. Um, 
the Met Office represents the UK as part of UMETSAT and so we've had a lot of input to the planning and design of the satellite and we will be a large user of the data that comes back from the satellite. Can you just describe what it looks like? How big is it when it's launched up into space? So the size of a car or even a small minibus. This satellite has uh, two main instruments of interest to the Met Office on board. So the first is an imager, which is a visible and infrared imaging instrument, which will take a measure of our Earth's surface and atmosphere in visible and infrared wavelengths and will allow us to produce imagery from that. Uh, the second instrument is a lightning imager, and this is a brand new instrument that we've never had from geostationary orbit over this region before. So this will provide information about lightning on a continuous basis. Lightning is a very good tracer for severe weather systems. So if we can see a lot of lightning, then we've got a very good idea that there's a severe storm in development. Tell me what this means to you as somebody who works in this field. To me, this means a really big deal. It's a new generation of geostationary imagery, which is going to have huge benefits for forecasting and our awareness of what the weather is doing at, at any one particular one moment. And it's going to mean that we can develop new products and improve what we provide to forecasters and customers to really help benefit the UK and help predicting severe weather and uh, hopefully mitigating some of the impacts from that. Thanks very much to Tom Blackmore. So yeah, that's exciting stuff, Alex, isn't it? Lightning strikes recorded from space. It's going to make so much difference to forecasting in the summer months. A real game changer. That's very, very excited. Really good. OK, just before we go, let's head over to Ollie Clayton with last week's highs and lows. Here are the weather extremes for Monday the 5th of December to Sunday the 11th of December. The highest temperature recorded last week was at Mona, Anglesey, with 11.1 Celsius on Wednesday the 7th of December. The coldest place was Estelle Muir in Dumfrieshire, where the mercury dipped to minus 9.2 Celsius. Altby in Ross and Cromarty was the wettest place with 25 millimetres of rain on Friday. Finally, the sunniest place was Yeovilton in Somerset, which clocked up 7.4 hours of sunshine on Thursday. Thanks very much, Ollie, for last week's highs and lows. And thank you, Alex. Alex, you don't sound too good. Oh, honestly, I'm fine. I've had a lot of love, actually, on our YouTube channel. In fact, we should be giving a lot back to our YouTube channel because we've had crazy views over recent weeks. So thank you to everyone who's checking us out on YouTube. If you've not done it yet, please subscribe. I had a lot of comments asking if I was OK. I do sound bunged up, but honestly, I absolutely feel fine. I've just got, you know, just got a bit of a, a block in the nose. But actually, I, I feel tip top. There are certain peaks in YouTube where we do um, issue not only our, our daily forecast, but forecast for beyond that. So the big one, obviously, is the 10 day trend, which happens on a Wednesday. But we also do a week ahead and a weekend forecast. When do they go out? Our week ahead goes out on a Monday and our weekends uh, goes out on a Thursday. But we're doing more and more actually now in our, in our studio with our new interactive touch screen and uh, maybe even going back to doing lives more regularly. So watch this space. As I said, subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll know all about it. Thanks very much, Alex. And I hope you're feeling 100%, 110% as we head towards the Christmas week. And thank you very much for listening. It's always good to have your company. That's it from Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir and editor is Adrian Holloway. Weathersnap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.